Thank you everybody for coming. I'm so excited. You know, back in April, outstanding teachers, art educators, arts leaders from across the state began searching for ways to try to inspire hope during this pandemic and also provide some virtual opportunities for us to learn and grow. I kicked off Alicia Lee's wildly successful Embrace series with the power of the prompt. And I'm so honored to be back here with you today to kick off the Maryland Art Summit for 2020 virtually with a keynote on Envision. Now, Envision is also gonna involve visual journaling and how visual journaling became not only a potential key to my art making process, and it could be for yours and your students, but also, you know, during these times, I mean, this is a potential way to kick open some doors for you with your kids in ways that you never experienced. Now, I keep a suitcase filled with these visual journals with me. And this is one of mine. And I carry it with me. I literally towed it with me from school to school, putting on demos of the importance of visual journaling. And I save these because it's so important for kids to not just hear it from you, but to see it. And if you collect and you amass a bunch of these, then they can actually envision what it will look like in the future. This girl got a real creative way of opening hers up. And the way that she worked, let me tell you something. She was somebody who you had to buckle up and get ready. She was a rock star. One of my first National Scholastic Art Award winners. This girl, if you want to know what it's like to be Charlotte, I mean, look at this thing. It's so heavy. I mean, you open this up and you know exactly what it's like to be Charlotte. And this documents her entire life. So pretty amazing stuff. And I'd like to kick this thing off and share with you some inspiring slides and walk you through the process. And I'd also like for you to create some art today. So I've, I've just set aside a little bit of time, at least for you to get started on the journey. So I'm gonna share my screen. Good to go. Michael, you look good. All right, beautiful. Well, Envision, so let me just walk you through the, the three basic big ideas that we're gonna explore today. The first one is artistic accomplices because I think everybody needs a mentor. I think it's so important, especially in this day and age and what that could look like. Points of entry. So we're gonna explore three powerful prompts today that could be a doorway. It could potentially for four to middle and high school folks to provide you with a, a week's worth of material for elementary folks that like us, we're only on a once a week schedule. This is five weeks of stuff but it's gonna get into some points of entry, even for you as artists. And then the third thing I want us to explore is what the visual journal can look like when it's not just meant as a process, but also as a product. So many of the keynotes that I've started out with, including this TED Talk in New Jersey, was that the most important job of an artist is to draw a line from your life to your art that's straight and clear. And I was thinking about this quote as I was preparing for this keynote, and it really took on some deeper meaning because right now you know, we're, we're all in search of meaning and we're all in search of making sense of everything that the world is throwing our way right now. So I believe you could replace that word art with just about any other passion of yours and the statement would still ring true. But moving forward from that, I think it's also important to, figure out for yourselves why this is important because you need to stay artist first and foremost. And if you're finding why this visual journaling process could be a potential key for you and you explore it yourself first, then you'll understand even your own pitfalls for your kids. And I think it's important now, especially with this pandemic, because it could be a, a situation where you're also documenting this very important time in our existence. So, as we get into artistic accomplices, you know, let's think about artists that work like you already, not artists that you'll never be able to achieve that style. Myself, I'm, I'm not an abstract painter. That's not my thing. I'm, I'm more of a figurative realist painter. 
So it would never make sense for me to explore what an abstract artist does. But Da Vinci, I definitely love the way he explores plans, diagrams. He kept his visual journal as like an everything book and you know, thousands and thousands upon pages of it existed. Edward Monk, he's he got into poetry and a lot of his poems inspired works of art, which happens for me as well. Wayne Thiebaud, the way he mastered color and the way he has these pops of purples and things, so important for kids to see. And Eric Fischel, who we became very close friends after he helped one of my students, who you'll see later in this video, Katie, and gave her some critique points. And he's selling his paintings for millions. But it was his process that spoke to me, the way that he worked on glassine sheets. And they later fueled him working much larger and larger. And some others that are so inspiring for me, Frida Kahlo, her visual journals, her diaries, visual diaries, as she calls them, are amazing. Cindy Sherman, very important, especially with this 31 nights prompt that I do that deals with the self that you could possibly explore today for photographers. Cindy Sherman explores herself in so many ways you don't even really know what she looks like. Sandy Skoglin, who's a professor at Rutgers, I mean, her work, her installation work's amazing, but you could also do this in diorama form in a shoebox sized installation with kids, even virtually, it's pretty cool. And Kehinde Wiley, I think his work speaks for himself, this line that he draws from design and figuring out what designs and patterns really speak to the person inside. So that process and how it fuels the product for a student of mine, and this is Pierrette, her process, it was really about finding works that not only spoke to artists that worked like her in concept, content, and execution, but she had access to all kinds of canvas at this time. But she chose to do this theme around homelessness, and her essential question was, how can we solve it? By working on cardboard and newsprint overlays. Not very archival, but very important for her to get in the shoes of someone who is going through something so tragic. So sometimes your work can be more about not just seeking out answers, but raising new questions. And for me, a lot of my visual journals, like this 31 Nights work to the left, it fueled a much larger series and created this larger conversation that I've been having for years with my work. And as you can see from this gallery opening, the work is displayed along with the final painting. Now, if you're gonna get to know me, you're also gonna get to know my kids. So I wanna share with you a visual journaling clip and I hope this will translate well. I'm Danny McCarthy, and basically this is my sketchbook. What we do in it is we create visual journals, and to me, visual journaling is just a way to copy down as much information as you can about yourself to explore how you think and how you feel. And it's really personal because nobody's telling you what to draw and how to draw it. You can do whatever you want and explore yourself. This is one of the pictures I like a lot. It's basically the world. Uh, force feeding me a bunch of medication. This is basically how I feel about it and just express my disdain for it. Mr. Bell has me doing visual journaling, which is basically just a way to get my thoughts down. This turned into another book I actually made. I have uh, color experimenting, which I could use in, we went to a museum with this, which kind of tied into my kind of theme, so I got that, and then I copied down, where is it, copied down her artist statement, so maybe I could get ideas from her. Visual journaling helps you to fuel ideas in your head to get them into bigger paintings because you're getting things down on paper and you're seeing what it looks like. Okay, that's where you're in the planning stages? Yeah. 
and then like over here this is where I was working on like skin tones because that was kind of hard to do at first. It's <laughs> really where it started to form with like the different shapes and the, the tones of the canvas and this is like the fourth painting back here when I, was, when I was working on my artist statement and I had things when I was writing my journal and I just had like things and I ripped them out and this pretty much ended up being my artist statement here. Okay. So we're really talking about moments and movements and Lee who interestingly enough was the 2019 individual artist award winner that you saw in that that video back when she was in a sophomore in, in high school with me. I try to capture these moments with kids when I was teaching as much as I possibly can. Now I'm trying to capture them with teachers and because it's so important to even seek out these moments. Now, moments like these, I mean, they can stir something up. You can tell these kids were so passionate about this process. And not only can it create curiosity, but it can build for you that magic of momentum that you need, even right now, where you're having a hard time connecting virtually sometimes with your kids. Now, moments, while they may last a minute, a movement, that can last a lifetime. And if you look at Lee from sophomore year to where she is now, I mean, you can see that these became life-defining moments that really helped define this child's story and who she was as an artist. And so actively seek to capture, capture these moments for your students, but also you know, turn them into movements for your families, for your communities, create something that's bigger than them before they even realize it. Now, Lee, despite her visual journaling process, was, which was also amazing, she got into public art murals and artist residencies in Annapolis and Baltimore, where she currently lives and works. But she also exhibited internationally in Lyons, France, Chile, Scotland, Northern Ireland. So her art began taking her places. Now, Katie, who I spoke about earlier, who Eric Fischel critiqued much of her work because she was so in love with his style and what he what, what what his work was about. It's really interesting. She went this far in two short years just because she blew through nine visual journals. Nine in two short years. This is how important the process was to informing her product. And not only that, her process, which began in the visual journal, it began with writing, it began with drawing. And it also began with boxing herself into those early paintings that you saw where she was planning them out. She later boxed herself into a later work that she did at college, which interestingly enough led to these experimentations with performance art and curiosity surrounding science, nature, spirituality, psychology, and sacred geometry. So where did that sacred geometry lead? Now she has a uh, virtual business where she creates her own custom-made hula hoops and she does tutorials online. I know it's crazy, but you know what? It's the same conversation. That circle, that square, it's all that same conversation she's been having for so many years that began in my studio. Louis Fertino, who went from junior year doing works like this where I was trying to I was trying to get him to realize the importance of some of the magic I was experiencing in his visual journal. And I said, some of those drawings, those could be larger paintings. And he thought I was nuts. He thought I was crazy. And then he heard that same advice again in college. And it's interesting that once he started to really embrace his true identity in his work and in his visual journal and recognize the importance of it is when he realized that his work could take him places. And interestingly enough, he wrote a, a very beautiful letter to me about this process. And he said, when he won his first Rising Star Award and I took him to the NAEA convention in Seattle, that's when he first realized it. But then his art even took him to a Fulbright in Germany. And now he's one of the top artists in New York City. So he went from the US Department of Ed to all over the world in a short amount of time. So it's all about exposing kids to these, uh, what I think are just magical experiences, exposing them to their process. And 
what is the why behind what it is that you do? What sparks your own curiosity? Now, I myself would never give you something that I wouldn't do. So, and I was the same way with my kids, they would tell you, and I'm the same way with my teachers. I would never put anything on them that I wouldn't do. So for this keynote, I developed three exciting prompts for you. And I want you to take a look at them and rewind, backwards map into the origin of their creation. So we're going to start out, if you have your visual journals, grab them now, grab a pen, grab something, because we're going to, this is going to make a very, very fast paced walkthrough, but something that you could do immediately, even with your kids, even right now, virtually. So you have your choice between the self, objects, if you have an object of some personal significance, like I had my grandfather's old little mini boxing gloves. He was a boxer and I got my son into boxing at the age of seven uh, after his autism diagnosis so that he'd be able to defend himself and also realize that he needs to lead a life of a fighter. So find some objects that are even one object that's significant to you. Place, it could be a significant place. Now, during this experiment, I would urge you to actually go to that place, but virtually, it could be bringing it up on your phone, thinking about a, a certain place that matters to you. And the self could transcend into 31 nights in self-portraiture, which I'm going to get touched on loosely and quickly at, at the end. Your objects could turn into a, a full-blown project. This was one of my most successful projects I ever taught. It was called 30 Works in 60 Minutes, where... I call out the times. A student doesn't know when I'm going to yell time. So they're doing these overlay drawings again and again and again, not knowing how long they have with it. It could be seven seconds. It could be three minutes. And then place. This could expand out into diptychs and triptychs. This could in involve creating the same place at different times of day, who's coming and going, you name it. So today's point of entry. Here's where we're going to start. I'm assuming you have your pencil, pen, charcoal, ready to go. I can't see you. I can only see my screen. So I'm hoping that's the case. And I'm going to give you 30 seconds to do a free write through the background. So go write anything that comes to the top of your head surrounding either the self, an object, or a place. Don't worry about grammar or what's if you're stuck just write automatic writing i'd recommend you doing this in your visual journal 20 minutes every day it's very powerful therapeutic now once we have the writing here's what i would ask you to begin with now and we're only going to spend a minute just getting this started because i do have a few more slides that i want to share with you before the end but i do want to get you started Create two perspectives and in two different medias. So what I would do is I would create, if I'm working on a self-portraiture, like I showed you in my video, I would begin with the self, either looking through my phone or looking from a mirror. 
and I would give myself a certain time limit on that. And then I would switch. And then I would draw right over top of that. And I hope those of you that are starting this, email a picture of me of, of it to me today. I would love to see it. So many of you did that with the Embrace Professional Development. And it was so cool to see your visual notes even about my, my talk, which was great. Same rules for objects. Give yourself some certain amount of time. I use a stopwatch on my phone and just said, switch. After 30 seconds, I stopped and then kept going using a different media, different perspective. And then the last thing you could do is do some overlays and contour and shade. So this is a very simple approach to some very powerful prompts. And now that you're starting this, I'm going to roll through just a few more slides for you. I hope everybody's ready. I can't see you. I know I'm just getting you started and it's only been like two minutes, but we got four minutes left. So my process with visual journaling, it would often fuel the product. Now here was 30 works that I created and there it is all torn up on the left and just ripping, tearing, collaging. And I discovered I liked doing that. And then I mounted it to, to wood and bound it by chains and hooked it all together so that they um, created this mini installation for a gallery exhibition. Relics of Childhood is another very important one that I've explored over time. That's a powerful prompt for kids too. think about your childhood and what objects symbolize things the most to you. And I'd begin drawing this and having this continuous conversation. Some other points of entry. So 31 Nights, that's a project I developed many years ago that's kind of taken the nation by storm. And you can see it using the hashtag and see what people have done with it in both drawing and photography. And it's based around 31 prompts. So there's the portal, the beast, lost you, facing the beast, the thaw. I mean, these are titles that you can really sink your teeth into. And the cool thing is that as you or as kids are creating these self-portraits, everybody's doing them differently. They all have the same entry point and they have choices. So it's a very choice-based approach to a problem that generates a lot of authenticity and originality. So think challenges for kids. Think guy grocery games, chopped, things that are going to get bring kids back to the plate and, and that they're going to have some personal things invested in. You're creating experiences for them. Now, my second version of 31 Nights, which was called The Progression, because I had to develop another, uh, yet another series of them, and I ended up with six total, which I gladly will email you and send you if you, if you email me and ask. Gordon Baldwin, who's an art educator in New York City, a friend of mine, he did his 31 Nights based on everyone that he'd met every day or seen on the subway. Paige Shyrock, a former student of mine. She created these everlasting dualities. Each image is a self-portrait overlaid against an ordinary object. Where did this begin? That led to this show. And there's my son listening in because she even hooked up some MP3 players to her show and added poems and overlays. It was so cool. It began in her sketchbook, doing a project called 24 Hours, where you try to document your life for 24 hours in a visual journal. Take all that fodder and you put it all together. And she discovered that she liked doing diptychs. And it eventually resulted in this whole thing. And here's one of my artistic accomplices, Sam Peck and Dave Modler from the Journal Fodder Junkies. They had a show recently on the visual journal and how it exploded. Here's what it looks like. So it all begins. With a pen and making my windows. One in travel. I'm going to glue 20 pages, 40 pages together. And I'm going to set a set of windows all the way through, cut, cut through all of them. And then, uh, you know, Triple direction writing, hiding it up. Right. Notes. Gallery plan for the show. Grading. Notes from class. Coffee tabs. Page flippers. Artist talk. Put it into my journal. Taking notes to think about dance. As an art educator, how do I am I incorporating thinking about dance in my visual arts class? Doing stuff with dance was in that one video you sent me. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, what does it mean to like have a non-human object treated as an existence? Right. So, what is the existence of this book? What is that like? And as you can see, those works from the visual journals just exploded and became the product throughout the entire gallery. So I'm going to end with Edward Monk, who's a, one of my favorite artists of all time. Over the course of his career, he created over 1,000 paintings, over 15,000 prints, over 4,000 drawings, six sculptures. Here's a man who showed up for the process. And whatever you envision, I want you to remember that it, it all starts with hope. And it's that spark that you create. It'll keep that art making going. And I'm gonna stop sharing my screen real quick as we hit the very end here. And I'll just leave you with this. Try to inspire belief. Try to inspire belief in your kids because igniting that whole fire, it, it starts with just one spark. And those visual journals provide you a portal, a window into a kid's soul. And even for families to understand what it is that they're thinking about, what it is that they're going through. So you're inspiring hope and you're inspiring belief in them even before they see it. And this is how it begins with a vision and a search for meaning. So thank you everyone. And I hope you got something started that you can continue with, finish for me, like I finished for you in that video clip and send to me. And I hope that you have an inspiring conference. Hey, hello everyone. Um, thank you for attending. Um, if you have any questions for Michael, now is a good time. Um, also, there are other sessions uh, starting. Uh, they've already started at 2.30, but you can head over to Crowdcast um, to view those sessions. Hey, do we have any questions? I think everybody's rolling to the sessions. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, for attending.